Hello, welcome back to the channel. And this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings. Jelly like to talk a load of bollocks. Tabletop gaming in general. And in this video, we're going to be talking about a dexterity game that involves flicking discs, funny old thing. We're going to be talking about Catacombs, the third edition. And in this game, one of you will be taking the role of the Overseer. The other players will be taking the role of heroes. The Overseer will attempt to kill the heroes and the other players will be attempting to kill the big bad boss. So in this video, we'll be giving you a very brief overview of the rules, be telling you what we do like, what we don't like. And we'll come back and we'll tell you whether or not Catacombs is still worth playing 12 years after it was first released. Not this version, this is the third edition. There was like another couple of ugly, shitty versions previously to this. But anyway, remember, if you're new here, then please consider subscribing to this channel. Leave a comment in that section down below. A lot of and all that YouTube bullshit. See you after this. Bollocks. So, Catacombs. How'd you play this game? So Catacombs is a one versus all dexterity game. One player is going to take the role of the overseer. They'll set up their board with one of the main bosses and the other players will take the role of heroes and they'll set up their board. You've got spaces for abilities, items and spells and you'll stick any of those things in those spaces, right? So the overseer will select one of the rooms that's available. They'll stick the board for that room in the center of the table and they'll put this barrier around the board. This is there just so that if you get some nuggets and want to flick discs halfway across Across the room then it's going to catch those discs in it you know what i mean so the concept of this game is actually really really simple all you're going to be doing is trying to flick a disc against your opponent that will give it damage and hopefully kill it there's different types of shots in this game and you may even be able to have a shot sequence which will allow you to do different things so the first thing you could do is you could take a rush action this is basically just flicking a disc without actually doing any damage if you do happen to hit a monster while you're doing a rush action then the monster doesn't take any damage at all so there's also shot sequence sequences that you can do if you see the fist icon this means that you can do a melee attack and if you see the arrowhead icon then this means that you could pull out your trusty bow and take a ranged attack what you do with this you'll take the relevant disc relating to your weapon you'll stick it within an inch of your hero and then you'll flick it and try and kill the monster also before the heroes will be trying to kill all the monsters in the room and if they do that then they'll be able to progress to the next room if any of the heroes die i.e if they lose all their health they will be dead but they will resurrect themselves somehow ready for the next room so effectively nobody gets killed unless everyone gets killed so if the heroes kill all the monsters in the room then you'll resolve that room you'll look at all the monsters that each hero killed and you'll get the amount of gold that's listed on that monster you'll be able to use this gold to trade for items and stuff in special rooms like Althea the healer you'll be able to trade in free gold for one health right you might be able to go to ish check the merchant and this is where you'll be able to buy loads and loads of different items and there's also the Amarath Inn you'll be able to trade eight gold to get one extra health per player this will take your health above its initial value this room will have a set of special items you can buy and you'll also be able to trade 10 gold to recruit an ally an ally is one of the heroes that wasn't used in a game right so you keep doing this you'll keep going through all the different rooms i think there's eight or nine of them and then eventually you'll get to the lord's lair the aim of this final room is to kill the big bad boss if the players manage to do that then they will win the game but if the overseer kills all the heroes in one room then they will win the game of catacombs so what do we like about catacombs so the first thing that we really like about this game is that there's really nothing quite like it. It tries to blend the best elements of the dexterity games that you're used to when you're flicking discs and shit like that with the RPG elements of sort of Dungeons and Dragons. It was the first game that we know of to do this, right? If you look at some of the other flicking games like Carambulage or even games like Rampage, they're very, very basic. They're lacking any kind of depth. But with Catacombs, you've got these special abilities that are thematically linked to the monsters that they represent present yeah there's loads and loads of different ways to upgrade your characters as you're going through the dungeon you might be able to pick up some magic items like the cloak of invisibility this allows you to teleport to anywhere on a board you might want to pick up the vampire sword which lets you nick health from your opponent if you do a successful melee attack or you might want to pick up the massive phallic looking war hammer which lets you do a rush action and then do a critical melee attack so there's loads of different ways to expand the game there's even pets in this game called familiars that could 
follow you around and battle these act like extra characters. These allow you to act like a World War One general where you can send the plebs over the top instead of getting your ass kicked, right? So the second thing that we like about Catacombs is there's loads and loads of ways to expand this game. You've got the Caverns of Soloth expansion. You've got the Wyverns of Wylamur expansion. There's the more simpler Catacombs and Castles game that can be merged with this one. And then you've got all the little special mini expansions that are only available on the manufacturer's website, right? So all in all, once you dig deeper into this game, you're going to find that there's just so many different ways to play this game. There's so many different options. It's sort of mind boggling. So the third thing that we don't like, that we do like about Catacombs is that there's no player elimination. This means that the people that are shit at this game aren't going to be set out for too long. You will be set out for a little bit, only until your mates decide to kill all the monsters, but you'll be resurrected ready for the next room. I mean, it is a little bit weird, I suppose, that you could die and then come back to life just because you fancy it, right? But I suppose at the end of the day, thematically, it doesn't really matter because it's a fantasy game. It's just a board game based on a load of fantastical nonsense, right? It's not something to be taken seriously, like a lot of board gamers seem to do these days. So the fact that nobody is going to be set out doing bugger all like a certain game called Nemesis back there means there's going to be nobody crying into their pillow when they go to sleep that night, right? So what don't we like about catacombs? So the first thing we don't like about Catacombs is that there's just too many icons in this game. I mean, the basic mechanism of flick, move, repeat, is sort of bogged down by the amount of different things going on in the game, right? I mean, you've got different options for rush, you've got different options for melee, you've got missile, you've got fireball, you've got giant fireball, boulder, ice, target, monster shield, wizard shield, sorcerer shield, teleport, roll shot, open port, for fuck's sake, it drives me up the wall. I can never remember what all of this shit means, so I'm going to be constantly digging into the rule book. So looking for for a tiny little bit of sweet corn in your granddad's so the second thing that we don't like about Catacombs is it just feels a little bit empty. Where the game is just a load of discs on the board and all you're going to be doing on your turn is just flicking in a variety of different ways. There's not really any kind of story going on. It would have been nice had there been some sort of campaign or some kind of event that happens or maybe some sort of objective that you've got to do, items to collect or something. I don't know. I'm not a games designer. I ain't got a clue. But it just feels like the concept of flick disc do damage flick disc do damage it just wears a little bit thin after a certain number of plays right and as such i just feel that this game is just lacking that certain thing to make it more cohesive so the final thing that we don't like about catacombs and every time we review a dexterity game of this nature the same thing comes up is that when you flick the disc forward you're going to either leave yourself out of position or you're going to leave yourself open to attack we had the same kind of complaints about that classic football game actually it was a pile of dog shit on it so bootio when you flick the defensive footballer forward you're gonna be leaving a massive hole in your defense and the same is true of catacombs when you flick the disc to try and do damage more often than not you're going to be leaving yourself vulnerable to a counter attack from the monster so unless you've got a rush attack tagged onto the end of your shot sequence you're going to find yourself just flicking backwards and forwards at close proximity until somebody does a bunk and then hides behind one of the pillars and just feels a little bit cheap on occasion you know what I mean? So to summarise, is Catacombs still worth your time and bother 12 years after it was first released? So we're going to say, yes, this is a unique dexterity game that attempts to merge the basic idea of flicking discs with more traditional RPG elements, right? It suffers from a horrendous amount of bloat and confusing iconography that you're never, ever, ever going to remember. This slows the game down and creates some unnecessary and unwelcome frustrations. However, the amount of options and variability sort of lifts this up over that minor gripe. Whilst we do have some misgivings with the way the game's played, Played, it really isn't anything else quite like this. So if you like dexterity games, this is really going to be a bit of a no-brainer. I suppose you could say that Catacombs is a bit of a flawed masterpiece. And being fans of dexterity games ourselves, I think we can live with that. So there you go. That is Catacombs, third edition of it. Remember, if you're new here, then please consider subscribing to this channel. Leave a comment in that section down below. Hit the like button and all that YouTube bullshit. See you next time.